It's Sunday afternoon now on November 11th and it's very windy and I'm making the videos outside because, well, as I have frequently because I live in a studio apartment and often it's the only time I can get enough isolation to make a video. Before I stop making videos today, I feel like I need to cover the thing with the cats. I'm not going to worry about finding all the evidence in my journals to support and explain and because I'm not sure how much that matters anyway. But the evidence is there that I've had all these dreams about cats and connected. I did show in an earlier video one of the more important pieces of evidence, which is this weird prediction that I had of my um, of this thing about a Siamese or um, a gray Manx with dreadlocks having to be killed in some sort of retribution situation. And then, of course, my um, cat, which recently was killed, was a gray cat, which sometimes would have dreadlocks. I'm not sure what the dreadlocks were supposed to refer to. She was a long-haired cat, so when she got older, she got some dreadlocks. But I think it has something to do with Jamaica, to be honest, and Rastafarian religion. Um, there was another very prescient dream having to do with a seal point Siamese being killed in a driveway, which is what happened to my cat Roxy, excuse me, Rocky, who um, died in a driveway. I'm not sure where that dream is. It's in my journals. And he appeared to be like a seal point Siamese, but then I had another cat named Princess who died in a driveway, who was also sort of like a seal point Siamese. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to go through the cats that have been killed as a result of this game and what I know about it. And what I'm going to do actually to really kick it off is to talk about this dream I had a few months ago. You know, I mean like a couple months ago. When I was writing about the mountain lions. So I talked about how when I was first, this was when I first started noticing that I'm, the things I'm talking about started getting coordinated with attacks actually happening on people or people being killed. And it started out with me talking about implanted mountain lions and the, my dream predictions of mountain lion attacks. And as I was working on that, on the 28th of September, a woman was killed by a mountain lion here in Oregon, um, not far from Portland. She was from, she was from, I think, the Gresham area, which is basically outlying Portland area. I'm not sure exactly where she was killed, but it wasn't that far away. It was in Oregon. Again, she was killed right as I was working on something about implanted controlled mountain lions. So shortly after that, I, you know, I looked closer at the, as I was making these videos, I looked closer at those mountain lion dreams. And one of the ones where I was being told to go call Fish and Game, now called Fish and Wildlife, in Fort Bragg, by which I assumed they meant in the dream Fort Bragg Mendocino, in California, Northern California, the little town where I was baptized. But obviously now I realize there was a connection to Fort Bragg, North Carolina military installation. So then I went and looked at the Fort Bragg, North Carolina website just to see what military groups were there. Um, and when I get to the front door of the website, there was this big warning page saying that the website wasn't secure. So I made a video about that, saying that was a bit weird. Within a few days of that happening, within a few days of that happening, I had a dream. And in this dream, I was looking through a photo album and I was looking at these Confederate generals and these pictures of these old, gnarled Confederate generals, and one was named Left Eye, and one was named Smoke. And they had these old, kind of crusty faces, like they were older Confederate generals being photographed and put into this album, Left Eye and Smoke. So I thought that that's kind of weird, and I didn't even write that dream down at first, but I remembered it, and I kept thinking about it. 
and then when I went to look at that Mickey Mouse video called the Opry House which I talked about in other videos some of the symbolism in that some of the disturbing symbolism in that I realized at some point that there's there's a section in that video where there's a snake charmer and he's making the snake come out of this vase with daisy emblems on it and the daisy emblem is a bit of a trigger in it if only because of stuff that I've read about MK Ultra, maybe maybe something I've experienced, but definitely stuff that I've read. And I just thought about how they were using daisies in the Disney 90th birthday of Mickey Mouse recently. They were using daisy, like not just daisies, but the daisy game emblem where a couple petals are missing. So what I heard is that Dr. Mengele was brought to the United States, this Nazi doctor who was doing experiments on twins. And that he would take these children and he would make them do the daisy game, which is pulling the petals off a daisy and going, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me. He lo and if they ended on the wrong petal, they would be shot and killed as a means of traumatizing the other children that were around. That was how they were doing trauma-based mind control back then in the 50s for some children. So it's real weird to see these daisies show up with Disney stuff. But anyway, in that video, there's a snake coming out of this daisy emblem vase and then it turns out to be just like oh and by the way this dream also relates to that that nirvana song paper cuts because everything looks like it's cut out of paper in that stage scene there but then the vase falls down and it turns out it's not even a real vase it's just a um, cardboard you know or a board like a stage prop flat stage prop and behind it is a cat and the cat's tail is what the snake is and then the cat kind of has this weird look on his face, and I realized the face of the cat was exactly the face of those Confederate generals in my dream. Like, that was what it was taken from. I hadn't, I don't think I'd ever seen that image before, but they're so good at creating images in these dreams that they can create images, they can cause me to see people that I've, you know, and recognize them with distinctive features that people I've never seen before. So it's pretty quite amazing, and they've been able to do this for decades. So they're really good in these dreams at creating very precise images if they want to. Uh, and in this dream, the image of at least one of these Confederate generals looked like that cat's face. So that then leads me to know what I already knew, which was that the military was involved in the mind control stuff that was done on me as a kid and probably also specifically connected to these cats that have been dying in my life. Um, and the cats are devised, for some reason Siamese cats seem to be particularly important maybe because of Siamese twins, people talking about Siamese twins being twins that are linked together. Um, So the cat seemed to be a method for linking memories through trauma. So if you have a beloved pet and the pet dies, then you tend to remember the events around that. And so then if, it, if the pattern repeats itself, then they hope, I guess, that you'll see the pattern. Unfortunately, you know, it involves trauma and it involves killing animals. So it's not really my idea of a great idea, but at the same time, I can see why some things that are, you know, this dark are also used to try to solve a situation that appears not to have any other way to be solved reasonably. Now, why it doesn't have any other way to be solved reasonably still is a mystery to me, but that seems to be the case. So, I'm just going to do a quick review of the cats that I've owned in my life and what happened to them. And, um... We'll see where it leads. Okay, so I'm going to start out with the cats, the two cats, two twin, you know, not twin, but two, a set of Abyssinian kittens that my parents, I think that they got these Abyssinians shortly after they were married, possibly even before they were married. So they, they, I think it was shortly after they were married. So they were married, like, um, I wasn't born until about four years after they were married. They were married, I think, in 64. 
the Abyssinian, yeah, it would have been 64. So the Abyssinian cats, they must have gotten shortly after that. These two Abyssinian cats disappeared when they were on a camping trip. Now that actually links to my cat Lion, who most recently died last April, because when she was a kitten, first of all, somebody got her for my daughter, gave her to my daughter's father, and then she ended up coming with me to Portland later. But, um, and Lion is the one who my daughter named her, but she was a long-haired cat, gray calico with no tail, so she was like a gray manx, long hair. Uh, and I'm just, I'm linking her with the Abyssinians because her dad wanted to take her camping. We actually did take her camping, even though, against my, um, you know, what I thought was good for the cat. But fortunately, she stuck around with us and didn't disappear like my parents' cats did. I now think that my parents' cats disappeared during that camping trip because they were catnapped, kidnapped, or killed by another force. And then the other thing I think I pointed out also in an earlier video was the CIA, for some reason, was very interested in Abyssinian cats in the mid-60s, like almost exactly the period of time that my parents had Abyssinian cats. Abyssinian cats are an ancient Egyptian kind of cat. So it's obviously some there's some type of occult interest connected to Egyptian stuff in those cats. And then there was the second cat that they got, which they got when I was a baby. It was a kitten, so I like grew up with this kitten, you know. Obviously the kittens grew up faster than me, but this was a black cat that they named it Nosos. Nosos <clears throat> seems like it's a Masonic reference. Some people say that the G represents Gnosis, or knowledge, but there was a city called Nosos. I think it might be one of the oldest modern cities or something like that. It was also the name of a character in a book called Been Down So Long, It Looks it Like Up To Me by Richard Farina. It was the name main character of that book. And my parents somehow kind of hung out with, uh, I don't know if it was Farina. Some, some of my parents have some sort of connection with some of the stuff that was going on in the Bay Area back then. So stuff like... People like Joan Baez, Tom Hayden, um, and I was just thinking about how Jane Fonda showed up in one of my dreams in a very in a way that I still don't understand. But um, so I don't know. But I think Gnosis was probably named after that character. So Gnosis disappeared when I was in second grade. Just disappeared. Then, a couple years later, they got me a cat, which I named Tiger, of all things, and it was a Siamese cat. It was an adult cat when we got it, and it was a really important cat to me because I was dealing with a lot of trauma because I was being targeted at school, and I was being um, beaten up a lot at home and yelled at a lot at home and blamed a lot at home. And by the way, a few days ago, in one of my dreams, in my dreams about the universities, they kind of indicated that all of that stuff that was happening to me had to do, especially as far as, you know, pain inflicted on me by my mother, my parents, but my mother, you know, my dad, just kind of by not necessarily being around or being able to prevent some of that stuff. Um, that that was somehow connected to universities. So maybe it was direct mind control being done on my mom. Maybe it was direct mind control being done on both my parents. Um, that caused her to have difficulty controlling her temper and things like that. Now I know that I know that mind control stuff has been done on my mom and my aunt, you know, her sister since they were little kids. So Tiger was a really important cat to me because that was about the period of time where I was really getting depressed and to the point of being suicidal. So I considered her to be a life-saving, an animal that saved my life because she showed me so much love. And when I started going out with Michael, she got sick. She got incontinent all of a sudden and he talked me into putting her to sleep. And I, she was probably made sick by implants and he probably did that on purpose to traumatize me. And I feel extremely angry about that, even today, thinking about that. If that was the case, not okay. 
Then somewhere along the line, Mike got a cat named Lundy. I don't know, L-U-N-D-I. I'm not sure why he spelled that cat's name like that. But I think it's interesting because I ended up going to Minnesota afterwards, and there's a big um, company in Minnesota called Lund, L-U-N-D, which is a um, food company. So I kind of wonder, now that I know he had these different kind of covert dealings with people in Minnesota, if it was connected to the name Lund. Um, there was also this argument that we had after seeing Crocodile Dundee. So there's Dundee, Lundy, and Lund. So I don't really know where he got that name Lundy, but I think that it might be related to something like that. Then, when I was living in St. Paul, somehow I ended up with this male cat, which we called Wurragog. And Wurragog also disappeared. Um, I don't know what happened to him. I think I thought at the time I hadn't had him fixed, and I think I thought at the time that maybe he wanted off because I hadn't had him fixed. I was only like 20 years old. I mean, I wouldn't do that now. Now I would get the cat fixed. But I don't think that's what happened now. I just think it was another cat that disappeared because pretty soon they didn't disappear. They started to get killed. The next cat was Rocky. I found Rocky. Rocky was um, like a mixed Siamese, so he had kind of had a seal point look, blue eyes, and he had been abandoned. And so we took care of him. He became our cat. And when I split up with my daughter's father, he went to my parents' house. And then one night he got let out two in the morning, like three in the morning. He was just found dropped dead in the driveway. Now I suspected that he had been possibly poisoned with antifreeze or something. I just couldn't think of anything that would kill a cat like that. There wasn't really any sign of anything like that, but that was my guess at the time. It could have been antifreeze. It could have been a directed energy weapon. He was only, I think he was only like two years old when he just dropped dead in the driveway. About the time not, uh, well, we still had tiger. We still had tiger, but we, um, my parents found a, a litter of feral kittens. And just as far as my mom goes, my dad liked cats, but my mom wasn't really a cat person. But I can tell, just looking at pictures, that she was really into those Abyssinian cats. When she, in fact, in fact I think they saved their money in the bottom and everything. That's what I come to understand. There's all these pictures of her with these Abyssinian cats, and she seems to have really liked them, but after that, she didn't ever seem to bond with the cats. When we found this litter of feral cats, she thought we should just get them all put to sleep, but fortunately, the vet wouldn't do that. He said he wouldn't put healthy you know, kittens down, and we were easily able to give them all away. We kept one, which my family named Munch. And it's interesting in retrospect, my dad named that cat. And it's interesting in retrospect, it was a calico cat, lived a long time with my parents, lived to an old age, and seemed to die a natural death. But it's an interesting name because there was a boy I kind of liked at school whose last name was Munch, now that I think about it. I don't know why I never made that connection before. I just never thought my dad was that involved with my life. But um, I think there might be something there. Um, then... So there was Rocky, and then I lived in a you know apartment with my daughter, and we couldn't have pets really. But then we were up here in Portland. My daughter's father got this cat Lion, which eventually came home with me and my daughter. Um, when she was about you know she was less than two years old when she came home to live with us. And she was a great cat. Really, really, really great cat. Long-haired cat, bobtail, sweet as can be. I mean, I could carry her anywhere with me. She wouldn't need to just travel with me and hug me and wouldn't need any kind of, you know, cat carrier even really because she was just sweet and trusting as hell. And she was very healthy. But um, in the last few months of her life, all of a sudden she got sick. I now know that she was being attacked with implants and directed energy weapons and that it was a manufactured sickness. It was hyperthyroidism, but it was manufactured. It was created. It was a generated illness. They were making her sick on purpose. And I got her some medicine and she started to get better. Then all of a sudden she got really, really, she couldn't breathe. And then all of a sudden at 4.33 and on April 3rd, she was killed with a directed energy weapon. 
She was killed while she was running across the room trying to get away from the directed energy weapons, the implants, you know, so implant directed energy weapons. So that was pretty traumatic, especially once I found out what really happened to her. I really, you know, it was really hard. I mean, any kind of animal, especially when you really try to help it, it's very hard. Um, at the same time, I have this cat, Roxy, which was a feral cat that I saved about 10 years ago now, and Roxy's still with us, and Roxy's still okay, but I want Roxy to stay okay. I don't want, you know, I know that she's <coughs> controlled. She's definitely mind-controlled, because I can tell. Because she, she does things like Lassie would do, which I think Lassie was about animals that are implanted and controlled, uh, just like the birds. Hitchcock's The Birds was about animals that are implanted and controlled. Um, so she does Lassie stuff. Like some, That's how she kind of helps me sometimes and shows me things. But um, she's certainly, you know, susceptible to all the same stuff. Um, so I want Roxy to stay okay. But I feel really bad about what happened to Lion. And then I forgot about, Prin I can't forget about Princess. So Lion, before Lion was spayed, this would have been about 2004, she got loose, you know, like she went into heat. I don't know if you still do it this way now, but back then it was kind of like at once the cat goes into heat, then you would kind of go get it spayed about that time. So um, she went into heat, and before I had a chance to get her spayed, she got out. And when she got out, she mated with a Siamese cat. She actually, I think, mated with two cats. I think she had a litter of kittens that had two fathers. But... The first cat that she ran into was a Siamese cat. This male Siamese, I'd never seen him before. He just showed up. And so then she ended up having a litter of kittens that were part Siamese and part calico. And they were really cute because a bunch of them didn't have tails. You know, they had. she had seven kittens. She, said she was a tiny cat, but she ended up having seven little kittens. And some of them looked like they might have had a tabby for a father. They were tabby with long tails. And then the others were clearly... Um, half Siamese and a lot of them a lot of them didn't have tails I think maybe three or four of them didn't have tails um, so they were very cute cats there was like white kittens with orange colored points there was one with a there was one that was white with orange points and no tail that one was very cute my daughter named it Snowball and there was one that we ended up keeping because it, it didn't get adopted. It was a beautiful, sweet, sweet, sweet cat. Really, actually, probably one of my favorite cats I ever had. And at first, when she was a kitten, she looked like she had soot on her face. And she was a Siamese. She had a tail. And we called her Princess because I thought she looked like Cinderella because she had soot on her face. And then as she got older, you know, it was like a patchwork, like calico points on a Siamese, blue eyes and stuff. And she and Lion were very, very, very close. Well, one day in October, it probably was October 2000 and... F was it October? Yeah, well, I think it was October that the water... Our, our apartment got flooded because a pipe broke or something. And then a few months later, my parents called this plumber and made this agreement to have pipes fixed but what happened is it turned into a monstrosity of a project and so they told us that we would be have to be, leave our um, basement apartment where we were living for two days and it turned into two months so they told us we were going to leave for two days and it ended up being two months and meanwhile my brother was living upstairs and my brother tried to care for my cats while I was you know staying other places and my daughter was put out of the house now I believe that this whole thing was actually I have reason to believe that this was orchestrated by Michael Payne us being thrown out of our house and all the other corruption that was around it and possibly even the, the murder of my cat princess which topped it all off um, why do I think that? It's because of coded stuff that I've seen in other places. Um, I think he's orchestrated a lot of crap in my life, actually. So we were thrown out of the house for two months. And then one day, it was a chilly morning, it was like in April or something, and they had these contractors coming in, and my brother told the contractors, don't drive in the driveway because we have cats. And it had just rained the night before, 
and my cats and my brother's cats kind of semi got along, but kind of semi didn't. So, you know, he would kind of, my cats could kind of go into his house to seek shelter, but they often didn't because of his cats. And anyway, I went to work one morning and I just I had this feeling of, of worry. And it's weird because I can remember the night before this movie that we watched. In fact, was it a movie with Courtney Love in it? It was that one about, um, you know, the, the guy with the magazine, was it Hustler? Larry Flint. It was the Larry Flint movie where the girlfriend and the girlfriend dies in the hot tub and stuff like that. I don't know if Courtney Love was in that movie. I think she was. And then the next morning I went to work and it was like early in the morning and I just had this feeling of worry about my cat princess. And I called my brother and he wasn't answering the phone and I left a message telling him to look out for my cat princess. And make sure she, you know, was safe and got let into the house and stuff. And like within 20 minutes of me leaving that message he calls me and tells me she's dead. And what had happened... And this was just so traumatic, and it makes me so angry. If Michael had anything to do with this, may his ass rot in hell forever. I'm serious. If he had anything to do with this. Anything. Um, what happened was this contractor, okay? This contractor, the, the, the main contractor was this female woman, Latina woman. And then she had these guys working for her, and... Um, she took off and went to Reno in the middle of this job while I was out of my apartment with, you know, trying to find somewhere else to stay. My daughter was out, you know, my daughter was staying with my parents. I was staying with my boyfriend in a, you know, um, RV, my boyfriend that Michael probably set up to. This guy drives into the driveway after being told not to. And what my brother comes home to find after leaving for like maybe half an hour, leaving his house for maybe half an hour in the morning, is my cat princess dead. There's a big, okay, it rained the night before. There was a big puddle in his driveway. Princess was dead in front of the puddle. She was, half of her body was wet as if it had been dragged through the puddle. And this guy was sitting there with his car in the driveway just staring at her, saying that he did not hit her, that he came and she was like that. I couldn't find any injuries on her body when I came home and collected her body from my parents. Um, but her half of her body was wet from this big puddle that was in the, it's the only wet spot in the driveway. So what the hell happened? This guy just, you know, they just claimed that they didn't hit her, that she was just there. But there's something happened. She was dragged through the puddle. Then I went to my brother's house with my cat's body and my daughter, just heartbroken, with my cat lying there, looking at the whole scene, also freaked out as hell. And I went to, I was going to bury her and this woman shows up, this woman who had put me out of my house, whose employee had killed my cat, apparently insisted up and down that he had nothing to do with it and she comes and she grabs my cat's body out of my hands the first thing she does is offer to buy me another cat as if I can just replace my cat with another cat which by the way is exactly what Erica Schlager said when I told her about my cat being murdered last April exactly so that's a pattern people on the day your cat dies when you're in a total state of devastation they come up to you and offer to get you another cat that was a pattern with me so I think the Michael Payne is behind that pattern it could be somebody else it could be the military but I think it's him and I think he's been empowered and I don't think he should be empowered I think he should rot in hell forever if there's a better place for him than hell, I'd like to know what it is. Because that's where he belongs. And, um... He wrecked so much of my life.
So she grabs my cat's body from me. She grabs the hose and she starts hosing down my cat. Hosing it down. The body of my cat in front of me and my daughter. My daughter at that time was about nine years old, maybe. Maybe eight, nine, something like that. She ostensibly was hosing it down because she was looking for injuries, and then she just like she was trying to defend her worker and say that there were no injuries on the cat, and um, it was obscene. And I made her stop, and I just wish I could have turned the hose on her and her employee and got rid of that. But no, no, we, they weren't done with us yet. They had to, you know, keep us out of our house for a while longer, where they while they continued to, you know, do whatever they were doing. So. I took the kitten and I buried her. And my cat lion was devastated. My cat lion actually, first of all, blamed the neighbors. The cat lion knew that somebody had hit her in the driveway. And the only people who normally drove in the driveway were our neighbors, our next door neighbors, and they usually drove very carefully into the driveway. So lion stopped allowing the neighbors to pet her because she thought it was the neighbors that killed Princess. I was working so much and I was away with my loser boyfriend so much that um, Lion then moved out of the house and tried to move up with the labor, neighbor lady uh, up the road a bit. But finally I came, you know, I got her to come back and stay with me again. And so she stayed with me and, um, you know, until she was, too, was murdered with a drone directed energy weapon on April 3rd of this year. So, like I said, if Michael had even, like, a breath of anything to do with any of this from the contractors, and I do suspect he did, partly because my parents were so weird about how they responded. They didn't seem at all upset that this woman had got, you know, completely lied to us about how long we'd be put out of the house, that she, you know, took off to Reno in the middle of the job, that she killed my cat. None of this fazed them what at all. So that only tells me that, in fact, they were... Um, there's something going on with them. Princess used to lie on my daughters, and my daughter, you know, was very, you know, she liked to sleep with me and made her feel safe and stuff, but when I had her sleeping in her own room and things like that, Princess would lie right on her pillow with her and, like, protectively and protect her, and she's just the sweetest cat ever. That people could go around murdering kittens and turn it into a joke just absolutely disgusts me just to the depths of my being and I think there's no, you know the fact that they're capable of doing that to animals shows that they're capable of doing it to anybody and they are these are murderers